Well, hello. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday on the Chronically Driven radio show and podcast. Sandra Sova here. Today, I am bringing you a conversation about discovering our purpose, following our joy, listening to the vibration of our intuition. My guest is Shannon Ryan from Heart Centered Space, whose motto is be true to yourself, be brave. I am so ready. Let's get started. Welcome back to the podcast. Sandra here, and I have really been looking forward to sitting down for this conversation, and I am excited to introduce you to my guest. Joining me today is Shannon Ryan, who is the creator, curator, and owner of Heart Centered Space. Shannon and I always have such great conversations, so we thought it made sense to bring that here to the podcast. Hi, Shannon. Thanks so much for joining me today. Welcome. Thank you, Sandra. I'm excited about our conversation. It's true. We always do have a lot of fun and thought provoking things to chat about. I know sometimes we go really, really deep. Sometimes it's light and sometimes it's all over the place. And when we talked about doing the podcast, I know you and I both said, let's not get too structured with it. Let's just do what we do, get together and have, have a conversation. Because I think that is sort of like part of the theme of what we're going to be talking about is authenticity and, and showing up for that. And that just, that just feels right. So we're just going to, we're just going to have our chat. Hey, perfect. Sounds yeah. so good. Yeah. Let's go with the flow. Go with the flow. You know, there, there are a few themes that have been coming up recently in a lot of conversations that I've been having. And that is, while we're having this human experience, the fact is we are all, we're energetic beings and there's a real magic and a power in really knowing ourselves, trusting our inner guidance and intuition. So maybe that's a good place for us to start. No small topic. Let's start big. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's so true though. I mean, in my experience, I truly believe, yes, we are far more than we appear to be, right? We are not just these, you know, simple bodies living this experience and then it's all over. We come from something far greater and far more purposeful as far as I'm concerned. And uh, we come in a little bit blind to our truth or a lot blind to our truth. I think, you know, Mm -hmm. some people these days are coming, you know, coming into this life with a little more awareness or a lot more awareness about the truth of who they are. But so many of us, me included, are just sort of finding our way in this life and rediscovering the truth and the essence of who we are. And it's quite exciting. And um, for some people, and so, and, maybe a little scary and we're all at different points and Mm -hmm. you know we're here to help each other I think uncover that reveal and you know shine that truth out so it is an exciting thing to explore and play with it is and it's ever evolving I mean that's what I find so so exciting is sort of the idea of allowing ourselves to reinvent ourselves become different people along the way and you know as we I I have these conversations a lot with women that are, you know, we go through our 20s, 30s, 40s, and then we start getting a chance to say, hey, who, who am I? Who was I? Who do I want to be next? So true. Um, Yeah, if I look back on my life, I don't even recognize who I have been at different points you know, in my life, I was a very shy little girl. And my father always used to say, now that's enough out of you, Shandy, you know, in this Mm. joking uh, voice, because I, I wouldn't talk. And there's no way I could have ever imagined at that point, you know, as a, you know, young girl, even my early teens, that I would be where I am now, where I stand in front of, you know, uh, a large room of people. And, you know, stand up and talk and share whatever I'm inspired to share and and lead a Mm -hmm. class. And through every evolution, I mean, I think throughout our lives, we have all these mini deaths and rebirths because we've just incorporated learning through the challenges that we've been through. And it's really great watching your progression. If we were to take a look back at our lives Mm -hmm. and see where we've been and where we've come, there's so much to be grateful for when we're willing to recognize and appreciate the blessings and the gifts and all of that. And yeah, that strength that comes from that is huge, 
huge. What I, what I like is as I've gotten older, I have learned to want to listen to and trust my own wisdom because not just for the amount of years I've been here, there comes wisdom with age, but experiences and just, and just the outlook, learning to, learning to go with the experience and not have, not necessarily have the destination in mind. Yeah. Yeah. True. Uh, releasing your expectation about where you think you should be in anything is a mm -hmm. huge gift to ourselves. And yeah, and as you said, you know, it's through a lot of the, it's through the challenges mm -hmm. that we have the opportunity to embrace the growth, but that's not always going to be what we do. I mean, we might have to repeat lessons over and over mm -hmm. and over again until, I mean, I know I have, everybody has, Same. right? And until you say, Oh my gosh. And that's where you, you know, you hear the typical, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting mm -hmm. a different result. And we've all done it. And, but there comes a point where you go, Oh my God, I want to do it differently now. I want a different outcome. So how can mm -hmm. I approach whatever the situation is and honor who I am because I'm deserving of the next level of the next step of the growth of the good yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that. And it's, and it's so true. It's, it's like you said, sometimes it takes, it takes a, a, a few times, but being able to recognize at a certain moment to go, Oh, I'm, I'm recognizing a pattern and I'd like to change that. And knowing that the, that we can, we can do that. And that's, I mean, that's fun. That's kind of, that's what makes, makes this, makes it a game. Yeah, yeah, we get to, we get yeah. to make our choices in, in everything that we do. And there's, and that doesn't mean that, you know, when we don't, that there's no wrong choice, there's no right choice, there's just the choice that happens um, when you're ready to make it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think acknowledging that we're all doing the best that we can in every given moment is really important and not to be hard on ourselves, to be compassionate to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so much more to say on this, right? It's, it's so deep. It's I a, mean, a few moments ago, you said getting to the next level by working mm -hmm. by working through stuff. I mean, that's, that's kind of what can what can happen. Yeah. And what's coming up for me right now is truth. So, you know, there's no right, there's no wrong, everything is what it is. Mm -hmm. And we learn to honor our truth. That's a huge, huge thing. And it's really easy to disregard our truth and to sort of go with the masses and to say, oh, it's okay if I don't do that because I'm expected to be this way. And, you know, that's okay. I can do that. It's not going to hurt anyone. It's not going to harm anyone. But the thing is, we know, we all know inside what our truth is. We all know mm -hmm. what we really want. And what we really want is what helps us shine. It what's make, it's what makes us glow and be excited and thrilled. It's the things that put us in the high vibration rather than the things that bring us into the low vibration. So when we tune in and recognize oh, what I really would love in this scenario is such and such, mm -hmm. you have the choice. You can step up and reveal who you are and be true to that despite how you think people are going to view you and just say, this is me, you know, mm -hmm. love me or, or not. This is my truth. Or you can say, I'm not quite ready to show that yet. And that doesn't make me comfortable, which is fine. And you'll get a chance again to, to step up to, into that place. Yeah, always, always that choice, always the, op the opportunity. We recognize it when we see it, when we feel it, but we may not always be stepping in and walking along that uh, the, a path of that is in alignment of who we are, even though we know what that may be, or we're discovering it. Oftentimes yeah. we're busy doing either for through the job or what, whatever it is, we're, we're living, a, living a life that's not lighting us up. And I mean, that's, that happens a lot. Sure. And that's, and that's part of the journey, right? Exactly. And, uh, you know, like you said, you know, at the beginning of our conversation, you know, we evolve, we've, we go become these different people throughout our lives. And, you know, you may not recognize that person that you were when you were 12 or 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever, however old you are. When we do follow what we, what 
lights us up, what we are in alignment, it feels different. You had done a really terrific post on your Instagram talking about the fact that we, we know that gut feeling, that, that hit, whether something is a yes or a no, we generally get that pretty quick. However, we don't always follow it and we overanalyze and compliment. Why, why do we make it so complicated? Yeah, it's, it, yeah. So we do know, we know, and you know, it can be, you know, something as simple as you're going to go buy something or something more complicated, like a big life decision. We have mm -hmm. right in our hearts, this instinct that pops up right away. And referring back to that Instagram post, it's like an immediate, oh yeah, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Or there's um, they're like, oh no, I don't like that idea. And there's like almost a, like a physical cringing. And, and then there's, a, there's something else that goes on in the brain. The brain can kick in. And then we say, oh, you know, maybe I shouldn't spend the money or, you know, maybe, and, then, and then all of that muck, the monkey mind mm -hmm. starts to kick in and it, gets, and it can get in the way for sure. And the thing is to go back and maybe even just start again, right? Like maybe just start again. Don't let when your brain engages yeah. and starts to make you question what's going on. That, in fact, is a sign that you're off track, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you take yourself out of the moment. You take yourself out of the flow, right? The, the so, creativity, right? Yeah. When, when we have that idea through inspiration, intuition, or, or whatever, I know a lot of times, and I, I'm, I can recognize this in, in myself many times, where I've known instantly that something was a great idea. And then I talk myself out of it. Yeah. And it's, I just want to say inspiration is like God talking to you. That's your connection to yes. source. So when you feel inspired, you're getting a direct download. And of course, you're only going to get good downloads from source. And so acting upon those, the universe loves speed. Mm -hmm. When you get an idea about something, whether it's simple or huge, and you feel good about that, it's great to act upon it and move. I do want to share something. Um, uh, a fellow that I work with, he owns his own business. And uh, he was talking to me, I was having this conversation with him talking about, you know, that first instinct that you get when you get that, oh, yeah, I want to do that. Or, that, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Listen to that. And he said, well, I don't know if that's necessarily true, Shannon. And I said, well, what are you talking about? And he said he bought this great big piece of equipment, hundreds of thousands of dollars for his business. And, uh, you know, he acted fast and he did it. And he ended up owing a huge amount of money on it. They didn't end up using the machine. It set him back. And, and he said, so I don't think you're right mm -hmm. about that. And I said, well, go back and think about it for a moment and tell me what was your first thought? What was your first impulse when you started to consider, when you first considered the machinery? And he said, oh, I hummed and hawed about it. And I said, so there you go. But then you let your brain get in the way, right? Then you let your brain go, oh, well, maybe I could make money with it. Maybe this, instead of just going, the first instinct was, mm, no, I trust that and walk away. And he wouldn't have been in that scenario. However, that's his growth. Like, you know, like we said before, mm -hmm. you find yourself in scenarios that we might not label as positive because they put us through challenging places, but that's the growth, right? That's when we, it's, <laughs> I, I say this a lot in my yoga classes. When I bring people into a posture that's uncomfortable and they don't like staying there very long. And I say, but that's just like life. When you come into a pose that's uncomfortable, when you come to something in your life that is uncomfortable, you just have to sit there and be with it and breathe through it and see what you can take away from the experience. What are the messages that come mm -hmm. through for you? How do you breathe through that and let it float through you that, and experience the growth? And experience, experiencing it. And recognizing it, whether that's through holding a yoga position or going through something, I think there's a lot of value in being present in whatever comes our way. And if we're always looking to avoid any sort of discomfort, like, oh, I don't want to do that. That's, you know, I don't want to, to stretch that way. Doing um, public speaking or, or, or doing something, if we shield and protect ourselves from things that may stretch us, again, that's, 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 that's going to be, be limiting. So that's part of the beauty of living through this life. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything is not going to be easy for us. And we, and, you know, when we say go with the flow, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that the flow is always going to take you somewhere that's just like rainbows and butterflies and unicorns and, you know, all the happy, easy stuff. The flow sometimes might inspire you. The inspiration might be to stand up in front of a crowd. It might be to learn something new and you've got butterflies and you're nervous and you're uncomfortable and you don't know if you can do it and you don't like the discomfort of it. But that magic, mm -hmm. once you get yourself through it, then you have this sense of knowing yourself at a different level, knowing that you can do something bigger and better than you've done before. Better is not the best word, but something bigger, you've expanded. Mm -hmm. And we're here to expand. We're not here to stay small. We're not here to stay safe. We're here to crack open and to shine and become the next best level of ourselves. And yeah, it doesn't happen by, you know, sitting by the pool and drinking margaritas, you know, all day long. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. you no, know? The, the experiences that we, that are presented to us. And again, I always, I always see keeps bringing up paying attention, recognizing mm -hmm. where there's opportunities and yeah, being in flow doesn't always mean propelling forward and achieving being in flow can be just navigating with ease yeah and the, and the flow is where you receive the inspiration to act and then when you act from that inspired place then it doesn't feel like it's as hard work it might be uncomfortable but then it brings you to the next place down the river and then it takes you to the next place down the river mm -hmm. and then yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. And, and I kind of want to touch back on you. you you've mentioned breathing mm -hmm. a few times, and that's really huge. That's a, your breath is such an important tool to help you in your, in your everyday life, everyday life, you know, no matter what it is that you're going through, taking the time to just pause and take nice deep breaths in and letting them go and just doing it a few times, feeling yourself coming back to your center, whether if you're feeling a little challenged in something, if you're feeling distracted, if you have to get the courage up to do something, if you just want to, you know, be with yourself mm -hmm. for a bit, it's such an important tool, staying with the breath, coming back to your breath, you know, and you can't stay with the breath all the time. That's, that's you know, virtually impossible, but coming back to the breath. Yeah. And bringing you back to your center. It's, it's so it's, good. It's one of those things that it is so, so simple to be able to use it. Such, and it's so accessible and such a resource, but to use it as a tool to help regulate being able to do those, those breathing exercises and practices. You'd think we all, we all would know how to do it, but um, a little bit of prompting and coaching in that area is not always a bad idea. Oh, not at all. I remember someone telling me a long time ago saying, you don't know how to breathe. Like, what are you talking about? I know how to, I don't know how to breathe. I'm alive. I'm breathing. What are you talking about? And then I, then I recognized, you know, once I was brought consciousness mm -hmm. into breath, that mm -hmm. it changed, it changed my world. It, it brings a sense of calm, a sense of presence, allowing you to be right there in the moment, where is the only important place like the right now, right here, where you are in this moment is the only moment that matters. And you yeah. can connect there through the breath, you know, just and find the ease, the presence, the calm, the connection. Yeah. To move forwards with being able to access that. And it really does help us to be in the present moment, which, you know, it's, it sounds, it sounds like that, as well should be easy to do. But I know a lot of people, whether, whether you call it anxiousness, monkey brain, whatever it is, being in the present moment doesn't happen because they're worrying about or reliving should have why this with mm. anticipation of what next, what next, where you're, you're basically stealing your time away from yourself because yeah, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Choice is, is so, so important. And Messaging that I share a lot when it comes to paying attention to what's happening in your mind, deciding what it is you want to do with that is, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, notice, you know, what's going on? What are you thinking about? So take a time, take the time and notice what's in your brain right now. And then ask yourself, 
is that thought that's floating through my head right now serving me? Is it something that's good for me to think about? Does it, is it going to help benefit my life? Or is it a thought that doesn't serve me at all to think about? Because a lot of people don't think about that. Like thinking about something that happened last week or two years ago, and it's done and gone, and you're giving it your energy. It's not, it's not benefiting you. So, you know, get, get true with yourself is thinking about this thought really serving me. Is it going to bring me to a better place in my life? And then the third one is, so is this, is this a thought that's worth considering? Is this a thought that deserves more of my attention? And does it need to be thought about right now? Because maybe it's not the best time to have that thought. Maybe there's something else that's better for you to focus on at that time. So, and, and then from that place, you bring yourself back to your breath. Maybe you bring yourself to your breath to find that out. Is this serving me? Breathe into it. Feel that in your body. No, it's not serving me. I'm letting it go. Yes, it serves me. I'm going to give it the attention that it deserves in this moment. I'm going to focus and just be in my heart and see what comes up for me. And then third, no, I can, I can table it for later. It's not something that needs my attention now. I can look at it later. Mm-hmm. Yep. One of these things is this is taking, this is personal ownership and responsibility. Nobody can do this for us. I think like anything else, it's, there's no there's no one way of being, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's learning it. It's a, it's a skill like anything else. And then practice frequently so that it becomes your, your reflex and your go-to, which is like, so, so something like that breathing and being, being in the present moment. I know I used to be someone who lived a lot, do, did a lot of rethinking and renumerating over what had just happened or, or, or things like that. And I actually had to break that habit it was, it was a go, a go-to reflex response. And then I started doing, doing things using techniques like um, breathing for sure, which is um, also part of using essential oils, breathing them in. So it, it allows mm-hmm. that process. Once I started doing that, I liked the response and the results from being able to get out of my head, get back into more into my presence, more, more into my, my heart centered space. And once you, once you do that, it's, you want more of that feeling and you can access it whenever you want. Yeah, it's, it's true. Once you start to practice it and you know, that's awesome that you're able to, uh, I can't control my mind all the time. (laughs) I can tell you, I've been teaching yoga for, and, you know, practicing meditation and breathing and I'm a human being, right? I'm here to experience this life and to, to learn, to grow. And I still catch myself with my brain going blah 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 and then I have to kind of look over my shoulder I pretend that my mind activity is this like little bug on my my shoulder I'm like "Ah, you don't need my attention right now like knock it off my shoulder you know laugh laugh at the thought or whatever and catch myself so that that's so true we have the tools because we're going to keep repeating a lot of Mm -hmm. these things and you know the those thoughts the chatter are not going to be always reflective of where you want to be. Right. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. it's, uh, and then you mentioned thoughts, um, feelings and actions. And that's, that's really amazing. When your thoughts, your emotions and the actions are all in alignment, then you're bringing the world that you want to you. So it's really important to know what it is that you want to bring it into your consciousness, really sit back, write about it, think about it, Mm -hmm. meditate on it. What do I want in my life more than anything? And pick one thing, right? One thing that you bring you so much joy and then feel what it feels like. So as if you're coming from the end goal achieved, feel it in your heart. How awesome is it to feel yourself experiencing that one desire that you truly want and live it in your mind feel it in your heart and then you have no no choice when you're in that alignment but to act inspired to help you get that so that's being in the flow right Mm -hmm. thoughts feelings and actions aligning bringing you down the path to achieving what it is that you truly desire and I'm, I'm, I'm like seeing a, a prism or a triangle and, it, and everything connects and then it lights the path. And, and uh, that's, a, that's the vision that, that popped into my mind. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> this flows so nicely into talking about a yoga practice. 
Shannon, I know that you and I were talking about the classes that you do and the way that you teach. And I know that there's some elements that are really, really important to you in the way that you get people grounded. And also, I know that anytime you can be doing out, outdoors and in nature, it also adds up. So tell us a little bit about what, what that looks like for you. Sure, I'd love to. Number one for me when uh, we come to practice together, whether it's outdoors or indoors, is really important for me to help people take the time to unplug, disconnect from whatever's going on in the outside world. So like we were talking about being present in the moment, being right here in the now, because that truly is the only time that exists. It's the only space that really matters. And our minds are busy and we need some help to sometimes slow things down and bring it back into center. And so I help people through visualization, through talking about the breath. I ask, I ask people if they're comfortable to, to close their eyes at the start of our practice. And then I slowly bring their awareness in a little bit at a time by activating the senses. So with their eyes closed, I'll ask them to listen to the sounds that you hear in the space, the sounds that are further away, the sounds that are a little closer, the sound of my voice, the sound of your breath. So they tune into that, activating the sensory faculties. And then from there, or I usually start with the eyes and I'll say, with your eyes closed, imagine the room that you're in. See the four walls around you, see the ceiling above you, the ground beneath you. Feel yourself being held in this space. I ask them to feel the sense of being held by the ground. So they're laying down typically to begin and they feel the support of mother earth coming up beneath them, holding them. And then they can feel themselves allowing themselves mm -hmm. to relax and release any physical, emotional, men mental tension through the backs of your body into the earth. So they feel supported and they feel held. I also ask when they're listening to sounds, they're noticing their own breath and then they start to follow the path of their breath. So they notice their inhale traveling in through their nose and then sweeping down their throat. You can feel your lungs fill up and you can feel your rib cage expand. And then you can feel the opposite, the softening of the rib cage as the breath leaves the lungs. You notice the breath sweep up the throat and then roll back out through your nose. So I, I, I get them to, once you're thinking about all of that, that's right here within you, then you start to feel your heartbeat. And you start to invite softness into your whole body. Every space in your body I will scan the body. And that brings you into a place where then you bring the breath in. Mm -hmm. You're present. You're right there. And you can feel, I like to use the analogy of water. So I say you feel, watch, or sense the inhale rolling in like a wave rolling onto the shore. And then watch their breath, feel the breath rolling out like a wave rolling back to the sea. And it's really meditative. It's just you get into this flow. And that's where I ask people to keep coming back to through the practice. So that's, that's a long way. <laughs> that's but a long description. Even just with hearing that description, I, I'm, I'm like, oh, doing, doing that, what a, what, a, what a gift to be able to allow ourselves to prepare for then whether it's going into um, yoga poses or whatever we're going to be doing, doing, allowing that slowing down, paying attention, going within mm -hmm. it really, it really is. Um, even just hearing about it, I'm, I'm sure our audience now is just like, Oh yeah, I feel pretty blissy, but imagine doing it, that in, in an actual, in actual space and lying down with the, with your eyes closed and, and taking that all in. That's, that's really, yeah, it's, it's worth time to do that. Yeah. It's very magical. I mean, even when I guide people through it, even just sharing it here with you now, I feel like I'm transformed into a different space. Like mm -hmm. I, 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 I get centered. I'm calm. I'm present. There's a joy that just lights up within me to share that with people. Um, and, 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 you know, that all comes from the heart and hence mm -hmm. the name of my, my, my practice, my studio, heart centered space. Mm -hmm. um, for me, connecting, you asked about that. So, you know, connecting from your heart is a huge part of the practice for me too. Um, after we've grounded and after we've taken the opportunity to release whatever's in the outside world to tune into the truth of ourselves to our essence i ask people to bring their awareness into the center of their chest to their energetic heart center so not the physical heart but that pulse that light that love that peace that lives right there in the center of your being and from that place i ask them if they like to to set an intention for their practice and to let it float up from their heart and to not let the mind get involved just if it's a word like mm -hmm. presence or it's a word like joy or community or whatever 
pops up for you, something that you'd like to introduce into your world, or maybe you want to dedicate the class to someone or something, right? But just let it float up for you nice and easy. And that comes from your heart and you keep connecting back in with that then throughout the practice. So three or four other points during the practice, I'll ask people to stop, place their hands on their heart, feel their, feel their intention, breathe into it, and then come back into the flow. So it's just, I like to touch in on that throughout the practice. And then at the end, of course, we're going to reconnect with the intention, remember it and try to carry it through the rest of our day, week, whatever. Mm -hmm. ahead. Yeah. That's really important to me. That's why I teach yoga. I teach yoga, not for the physical practice. I teach yoga to help people be, to help people be, be with themselves mm -hmm. and know, know truth, know their truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we yeah. do have within us so many resources. I, I know my, bo my body responds, for instance, I feel less pain when I'm, whatever it is, even just in listening to you, you just got described that, that centering in process my body relaxes and I feel less pain. So okay. it's, you know, it's a wonderful boost that we can give ourselves. Oh, it really is. And especially if you're practicing one of the slower practices like yin or restorative or, you know, deep stretch, which is similar to yin. Um, that is all about resetting your nervous system, right? Because we, like you said, we're living in fight or flight constantly. Mm -hmm. We so rare that people take the time to slow down and just, be where they are because they're thinking oh I got to go pick up the kids I got to get groceries oh I have that project I have to do and you know wouldn't it be great if I could have a shower <laughs> life is so busy you know and when when you take that time I, I often remind people you know thank yourself mm. for making the time to do something nourishing and good for you because when you get the when you get onto the mat and you're in one of these slower practices your heart rate slows down the breath becomes rhythmic, just like you said, you know, you are resetting and your, your nervous system and the digestion and the ability to rest and the, the ability to slow things down and bring yourself back into that healthy way to proceed is so important to do on a regular basis. Like you should do it every day. And how many really of should. us, especially over the past couple of years, have been doing the exact opposite of that being there's so many people that have been really under a lot of pressure and strain and feeling in a way that's the complete opposite opposite of that. And so that what I what I quite frequently talk about on this show is that those sort of things, if left unchecked and go on for a long prolonged period of time, that's where illness sets in. Well, that's exactly what I was just going to say. Yeah, and, that stress is a major cause of illness. And so if we believe that, and I know that that's not a hard concept to, to figure out that excess of, of stressful environments, stressful emotions, all of that is going to be a, a detriment and can bring upon illness. If we believe that, then let's also believe and embrace the opposite, that providing that expansive space that time to check in that grounding that slowing down mm -hmm. that can help restore and and repair and it is it's a very very powerful thing to realize number one but then to be able to put it into practice and allowing yourself to do that perhaps by recognizing just how important it is yeah 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 really really important and and to notice that it's the thoughts that float through your mind which are going to really determine what's going to happen for you too right mm -hmm. thoughts become things and we've had that you know that message has been shared with us throughout the ages and you know most recently i guess with the the book the secret um however the one thing that was missing i don't want to divert us too much here but i want to share this because i think it's important one really important message that was omitted from the secret is vibration mm -hmm. you have to be in the vibration for those thoughts to manifest right so but but just to get back to what you were saying if you are so busy thinking about the stress of life if you're so busy thinking about, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, I don't have time for me, then that's what you're going to experience in your life. So going back to choice, you have the choice, your thoughts are your choice. You get to choose what you're going to think. And then you get to choose to get emotionally connected with that. And then you get to 
act like the acting like i said before just happens Mm -hmm. because you're so in alignment there right so yeah you can have those stressful experiences and stay in them or you can say now it's time for me to care for myself again Mm -hmm. and and take the steps follow the tools yeah do the reset exactly I, li- I liked how you did mention that, that the vibrational aspect of bringing that into whether you want to call it law of attraction, manifestation. That's why I love heart-centered space. I mean, it's just like, it's, it's just perfect, Shannon. If we don't <laughs> get that stuff tapping into our, our heart, not our thinking brains, but our mind, body, soul, and spirit, when we move that into a vi- that was centered in there, it becomes a, a vibrational level. And that's what everything is. And that's how you are able to attract more of what you want. Right, right. And, it, and it's not just the good stuff or the bad stuff. Like it's what you think about and what you give your heart to you manifest that can be challenging things, just as much it can mm-hmm. be good things. So notice what you're getting emotionally involved with notice what picks you up and notice what puts you down notice what you're giving your attention to because that is I like to I like to think about your heart center as your brain your heart is your Mm -hmm. brain forget this this is what helps you accomplish stuff I don't want to diminish the brain or the mind I don't the brain and the mind are different things but the I don't want to diminish the mind. People are always poo-pooing your mind and your mind is a really, really valuable tool when you know how to use the different faculties of the mind. But your heart is the space where you receive that inspiration. And then you get to tune in with the mind to your inspiration, uh, to reason, to imagination, to intuition, to willpower, to help easily, more easily, more connected manifest those things that feel like you want to manifest them mm-hmm. right so yeah and, and like I said it can go both ways so if you're if you're you're imagining things going badly if that's the mental faculty imagination then but you can imagine them going really well too and get excited and feel it see it imagine it act as if pretend you know play like a mm-hmm. child look at kids they play, they, they become anything they want to in their minds. We've lost that. So we got to get it back. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. know when we were, when we were sitting the other day having coffee, we were kind of talking about all this kind of stuff and, and, and everything. And, and at one point you said, I think you said, what if the lesson is that we're supposed to be having fun? Yeah. Like, yeah. why do we yeah. make, why do we make it so, so dang hard? Yeah, yeah, we will, because we've been, we've been brought up in this world to believe that, right? You know, money doesn't grow on trees, and you have to have this, that and the other thing. And, you know, who do you think you are? And, you know, all this messaging, which is no fault of our parents and our families and our mm-hmm. teachers and our work colleagues or bosses or whatever. That's the way they were raised too. But yeah, I think that we're entering the age where we are allowed to say life is supposed to be fun. Mm-hmm. we're supposed to live I, I've been saying a lot recently live in your joy live in joy what brings you joy what lights mm-hmm. you up because that's good don't think that it's not I was I was talking to um, someone the other day and I said do you think that life is supposed to be hard why aren't you allowing yourself to you know get the simple things like you know a bag to carry all that stuff that's falling out of your arm like mm-hmm. you could easily get a bag and put it in your arms that's a very very simple example but life we don't have to make the hard choices we can make our life easier and we can have fun doing that mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's so yeah what if yeah what if what if we're supposed to just have fun wouldn't that be so great what what would we do differently and when we are tapping in to our our heart our emotions how we want to feel, um, being, being out in nature, when we are doing that, we can more easily have creative ideas come to us and have that be what draws us to where our interests lie, have us have a curiosity to explore something and to want to do it and have that, that freedom and that expression and that playfulness to find find out what might be joyful for us 
Yeah, yeah. Being in nature is such a is such a great thing that uh, often people don't give themselves the time to do. I mean, if you could just take ten minutes a day and go for a walk, you know what a what a gift you're giving yourself, and to do it incorporating the other tools. So mm-hmm. center yourself, get present first in your body, and with your breath, and in your heart, and then walk like. Thich Nhat Hanh said, you know, you're walking meditation, feel your feet touching the ground. Mm-hmm. You know, each, each footstep is like a blessing on the earth, right? Really feel that connection. And yeah, and it's just, you don't even know, we don't even know the value of that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just so good. It's just so good. We're tuning in with the truth. I mean, we are part of nature, right? We didn't, just drop in here we're physical bodies we're made of the earth and we are meant to connect with the earth and listen to the messages that she has for us right absolutely yeah 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 it's it is so powerful and we are so fortunate where we live on vancouver island it there are so many beautiful places so nearby and Mm -hmm. i wanted to take the opportunity to hear a little bit about yoga by the sea because Mm -hmm. you are doing something really really cool um out at neck point i am i am thank you um from may until october every sun every sunday morning 9 15 and every friday morning at the same time 9 15 i invite people to gather with me by the seawall at neck point um park and it's just it's one of the most beautiful parks i think in nanaimo right on the sea you've got Mm -hmm. this you know almost 300 degree view of the ocean you know as you practice there and you know, we do all the things that I talked about. We center first. We feel what it feels like to be where we are. But we, of course, also add not not just physically in your body, but in the space that we're in, because we're not only hearing our breath and, you know, my voice, we're hearing the birds mm-hmm. and we're hearing the water and we hear the wind blowing through the trees. And that connection point, even just through the ears, is powerful Mm -hmm. then you're breathing that fresh air in through your nose so you're getting that uh, so many of your senses are activated by nature and then when you open your eyes and you've got a seal you know playing around in front of you and an eagle swooping down overhead it's so rare that we have a practice where there isn't an appearance of a seal or a sea um a sea otter i think they're called or um, one an t- eagle or one time always... you'll look they'll they'll be learning the poses and you guys will look over and you'll see them doing um going along and doing doing the moves with you it's a magical <laughs> space it place yeah. it really it really is so um so wonderful so we are going to put all of shannon's details and contact info information in the in the show notes so you can if you are local here on mid vancouver island nanaimo nanaimo bc that is definitely uh, something that would be a, a wonderful, a wonderful way to start your your Friday or Sunday mornings from mm-hmm. May until October. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, no, that's just that's lovely. Great. The other thing that I wanted to talk about because this just lit me up so much when you mentioned this. Now I don't know if this is sooner than you were going to be launching or talking about, but you mentioned something called intuitive painting. Is that what? Yes, I, that's it. That's it. Exactly. Intuitive painting. Um, it's um, a process that I've been doing for a number of years. I've worked with individuals and I work with groups. Um, and intuitive painting, to describe it, try to describe it simply, is painting without an outcome in mind. And often people will say to me, Oh, I'm not creative. Oh, I can't paint. And I say, yes, you are creative because everything you do is creating, you know, the way you dress yourself, the way you eat, you know, the way you brush your hair, you know, when you write, the way you speak, everything we do is creative, right? Mm -hmm. So I help people to understand, first of all, they are creative beings. That's we are as humans, we are creators. And then I help people to sort of get out of their own way so we step up to a canvas and we've got all these different tools different size brushes and you know maybe sponges or rags or things that we can you know like I don't know things that we can use as like uh, stamps or whatever and we use these to paint with and I guide people through it now I want people to understand that this isn't um 
like paint by numbers. It isn't like, you know, paint night at the bar where you're going to come out with a, you know, imitation right. Van Gogh thing, right? So we're what not happened? all drawing the moon or the lighthouse or, or whatever. We're, it's more exploring with color and texture and. Exactly, exactly. And so, and, and we work layer upon layer and, you know, sometimes you might be guided to close your eyes and to, and to just move your paintbrush around and then you'll be guided to switch your tool and then maybe switch the color then maybe switch your canvas so often we'll work with two canvases going back and forth and we often we're standing mostly i like standing for the practice because it gives your body the movement mm. flow and often i'll start with um, a meditation and a little flow practice to loosen up and you know shake all the cobwebs out so that you feel free to move and then we step back every now and then and look at our canvas. And then we see things that we didn't really know were going to be there. We don't, you know, all of a sudden it looks like there's maybe a heart or a bird or a face or a tree or something sort of shows up or just a feeling that feels really good. Like, I love the way this part of my canvas looks. That's so cool. And then you look over here and mm, I don't like that so much. You, you might get that sense. So emotions can come up for you throughout the, throughout the process. And it's going to be different for everybody. And that's fine. And it's all good. And so the key is to recognize what it is that we are appreciating about the work that we're doing, accepting what we're not loving so much, and then working from there and then saying, so how can I change this? How do I want to change this? Do I want to change this? And then it's also really important to not get married to any layer. Mm. So you might say, oh, I really, really like this and I don't want to do anything more. But you've got like three more classes to do or another hour, depending on where we are. Right. And you don't necessarily have to fill up the time, but it's fun to explore. It's fun to push your edges like yoga to get into those uncomfortable places and to see what happens when you push through them, when you breathe through them. So it's, it's just really neat. I've had paintings evolve um, from like scribbles and mm. really yucky stuff. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this at all. And then I would get angry and anger is okay. And I took a slab of white paint, like a bunch of white paint in my hand and I put it on the canvas and dragged my hands down and I crossed my arms like that. And I went, holy crap, that's pretty bloody cool. So my emotion immediately went yeah. from, I hate this to, I love this. And just seeing how you push through that, it's just so cool. It's I, so cool. I like the the sound of it just really appeals to me because I consider myself, I'm, I know I'm creative, but I don't consider myself artistic in conventional. So I would be intimidated to do, you know, to go to a, a, a paint night because I wouldn't feel that I would be doing that, but to just be exp expressing those emotions and, and taking a step. I know I could do that. And I think, I think it would be a lot of fun. People are often surprised by what comes out at the end. And I've worked individually, as I said before, um, and I've worked in groups. And there was one particular person that I worked with on an individual basis. And he was raised by a very, very strict family. His father was in the military and you don't do anything outside of the lines, right? So getting him to find fluidity with his arm just to draw circles, getting him to do something that wasn't like a box that you fill in and you put a chimney on the top and mm -hmm. like predefined was like, oh, scary and challenging for him. And that, you know, after every paint session we had together, he was like, oh my God, I feel so free. I feel like I'm loosening up. I feel like I'm letting go of tightness that was imposed upon me by somebody else. And I'm allowing myself to be expressive in the mm -hmm. way that feels truthful, you know, and honoring him. That was really cool. Yeah, that does sound really cool. So this is something yeah. that you are thinking of bringing to Nanaimo? Yes, I am. I just, as you know, as things are opening up again, um, I'm, I'm setting myself up to start to work with groups. I can work individually. Um, if people want to set up a group class with me, feel free to reach out and tell me how many people you want to work with and I can give you the outlines for it. I will be putting something in my calendar that will be a seven week session. It's best I find to do it over a progression of seven weeks. We can do one off. Mm -hmm. It's fine to do one off. And that's sort of fun to explore and play the very first time with it. If you like to see how, how it resonates, how challenged you feel, and if you want to push it. So I will do one off in the, in the calendar. And that's so I do uh, one group session 
Oh, I have to double check. I haven't, I haven't looked up back, back at what I've done. So there's definitely one group sessions and five group sessions and there's a number in between. It might be three or four. So you have that option of joining those and I will be putting them in my, in my calendar shortly. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah. this is, I mean, when I'm hearing about these things, the, the word that just popped into my, into my brain is learning how to live a free range life going after what we're, what we're drawn to recognizing that we are able to do that. Maybe we're supposed to be doing this sort of exploring and, and being playful and creative and that we always can choose. We can choose at any moment to switch things up, do, do what we want to do. Don't do things we don't want to do. Sometimes when I have conversations, people think and say, oh, well, that's nice for you, but my, but, but, but can't try, try one thing, try the process to follow that instinct, start, start playing around with it again, be, be playful and see, see what can happen because it is sure it is so much more fun to be feeling at ease and in, and in flow. And you are someone who helps people find, find that, that peace and that joy by a lot of the, the stuff that you share and the classes that you facilitate yeah, thank you. It's a, it is such a joy for me to help people find their freedom. It's really about mm-hmm. breaking through. I just kind of felt like the just had a sort of sensation of like a cage around a heart crack, like bursting open. Mm-hmm. And then there you are. Hey, look at me. And it's and the world's gonna accept you for who you are. You know, I've I've struggled with that. You know, in the past too. You know, let mm-hmm. yourself be seen. One of my little slogans is be true to yourself. Be brave. Right. Yeah. Be it's, true to yourself, step up, even if it's uncomfortable and find the joy that comes from that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the more, the more that we do that ourselves, the more that we see others doing that, what we are creating energetically for, for all, all of us is a better, it's on a different, it's on a different, a different level. And I want to, I want to be able to see Um, more people having that freedom to express freedom to show up as their, as their true authentic selves. And yeah, let's just, let's just embrace it all. What, um, any, anything else on on your heart that you would like to share today? Uh, Just what was coming up as you were saying that is, you know, let's be inspired by each other, right? Mm -hmm. Let's be inspired by each other. Let's see someone else living in joy instead of saying, Oh, nice for them. Say, wow, that's for me too. Yes. I want more. I want more of that. Yeah. Step into that. Absolutely. Yeah, that would, and together the energy that we can create by living in that truth and that joy, that's who we are. When you know, you're feeling compressed. That's not who you are. When you feel that say, okay, I'm choosing joy now. Yeah. yeah. And ce- celebrate um, one another as we see others doing, doing the same. Shannon, where can people best find and connect with you? Okay, well, um, I am on um, Instagram. So my Instagram handle is heart.centered.space. Um, I'm also, um, you can email me at Shannon at heartcentered.space. Okay, the, here's the tricky part. Centered is spelled the Canadian way. So it's C-E-N-T-R-E-D not E-R-E-D, like many people think it would be. So (laughs) that's, I got to choose, I should have chosen an easier, easier name, but yeah, so you can, you can email me, you can find me on Instagram. Um, I'm also on Facebook, but I'm, I'm more regularly on Instagram. Yeah. And like I, like I said, we will make it easy for you. I will be putting all of those links into the show notes, both for the podcast and the YouTube version. So you can find that easily as well on the wellness Wednesdays, Facebook page. So you don't have to remember or write those down. We will do that for you, but uh, um, I encourage you to check out some of Shannon's work and her offerings. She is a yoga teacher and she has has so much more to offer the world from that. I just love our conversations. I know that we just sort of jumped quickly all, all over the place. I was just, there were so many, so many things that we wanted to talk about. We honestly could have, um, could have just, uh, just 
had a way a way longer conversation and i would like to invite you to come back and uh, we can continue this at another time i would love that thank you so much sandra it's so much fun to to chat with you as always thanks for sharing